thank you today that not only does he just know your name, but some of you know he knows how many hairs you have. Some of us, he probably knows how many we've lost. I guess it's the same. What are you laughing for? It's not that funny. But I'm so thankful that he loves us so much that he is concerned about the smallest of details in our lives. And we can take great comfort in that this evening. Amen. Thank you, worship team, for leading us this evening. And we are so thankful for your commitment and effort to be here tonight. This is the day the Lord has made, and I do pray that you've been able to rejoice in it, even if you had to work and labor and all those things today. Uh, praise the Lord, we was able to have the strength and the ability to work and labor, amen? Uh, many was not able to, but he blessed us to be able to today. If you have your Bibles with you tonight, we're just going to jump right into the Word. I won't keep you long tonight, but we do want to share with you uh, Judges chapter number 13, Judges chapter number 13, if you have your Bibles with you, uh, please continue to pray for Caitlin and her family uh, throughout the evening and through the day tomorrow, if you would. I know the family would greatly appreciate that, as well as please continue to pray for those there in Nashville and the surrounding area. Some of the small cities all around Nashville has been completely destroyed. Uh, Mount Julian is a place that has been pretty much just completely destroyed and uh, men and women are trying to get their bearings as we speak and uh, it's a very early time of year to be having storms such as that to bring this type of destruction. It's bad enough when you're in the spring and early summer months when you have these storms come through but at this time of year when it happens it's very cold at night uh, people have no way to heat their homes and things of that nature uh, so please pray for them and around Nashville and you, some may be aware some may not but there's a very large homeless population in the very area that it was hit and uh, we have some friends that work there and uh, that are very active in the homeless situation there and uh, it, it's it's a very much uh, difficult situation in the city there now so uh, please uh, be praying for those people if you think you might want to go with us just kind of make a mental note of that we may be pulling out of here Monday morning early sometime uh, I'll let you know uh, as soon as we get some things nailed down and uh, we'll be gone for a few days Lord willing if we get plugged in be cooking doing some things like that providing food and maybe taking some supplies in if we're able to make it, uh, make all the connections over the next 24 hours or so. So we do have a couple of groups that's uh, going to go with us if we do, if we are able to get, uh, get some boots on the ground, so to speak. Uh, Pastor Lovett, and uh, he's got a crew that's going to go with us, as well as Pastor Marcus in uh, Water Valley, Kentucky. Uh, he's going to be putting a crew together to go with us as well. So be praying for that effort, and if we can be of assistance, we're going to go do that. Uh, and uh, you're welcome to go along if you'd like. Just uh, I'll let you know more about that. Watch social media over the next 24 or 36 hours, and you, that'll be the best way for me to connect with you. Uh, or you can feel free to call me, all right? But tonight, I want to get into the Word, share with you what the Lord's put on our heart for this evening. Maybe a familiar story for, for those of us in the room tonight, uh, but I want us to revisit it because I do feel like the Lord is put something in our heart uh, for this season and concerning our time together. But let us begin in chapter number one of Judges, chapter number 13. Read the first several verses just to lay some groundwork tonight. If the Lord would help me, I want to I talk to you tonight for a few moments about a time of unexpected visitation, a time of unexpected visitation. It says, and the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. And there was a certain man of Zoar of the family of the Danaanites, whose name was Manoah. And his wife was barren, and she bare not. 
And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive, and bear a son. Now therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive, and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told he me his name. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O my Lord, let the man of God which thou didst send come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah. And the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made haste and ran, and showed her husband, and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. So Manoah arose and went after his wife, and came to the man, and said unto him, Art thou the man that speaketh unto the woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child, and how shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord said, unto Manoah of all that I have said unto the woman let her be aware she may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine neither let her drink wine nor strong drink nor eat any unclean thing all that I commanded her let her observe for a few moments tonight I want to take this story and I want to take us on a journey just for a few moments I believe tonight that we are in a season where we must be in tune with the Holy Spirit of God like we have not been in recent years. I don't say that in a mean-spirited way or derogatory way, but how many knows it's easy to get distracted? And as we talked on Sunday, sometimes you have to get to a place where the noise is absent from your life. And it is clear today that we must experience a change in this present hour if going to church a couple of times a week was going to fix our world it would have been fixed a long time ago if our families was going to be saved and delivered and going after the things of God just because we came here they would have done done that but we have to realize that we desperately need the church to arise in power and authority the church is not this building We have taught that. We've preached that. This is a designated house of worship. It is a holy place. Yes, it is to be reverenced. It is to be respected. Uh, I get all of that. But we, the men and women that fill the pews in this building and every other building like it, we are the church. And we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And we are to be the ones that are walking in power and authority. And if the world is going to experience a change, it will be because the church takes its rightful place in society. Evil today is everywhere. I do not have to tell you that. You are aware of that. Not only is evil everywhere, but destruction is the new norm in our society. Death is something that comes in all shapes and sizes and forms in our society but it has become so every day in our lives that we are no longer even moved by it we see a generation self-destructing in front of us not occasionally not daily but moment by moment And while we sit in our padded chairs and call ourselves the church 
and go through religious activities, we continue to bury a generation, a generation of pastors that never pastored, a generation of singers that never sung, a generation of prophets that never prophesied, a generation of teachers that never taught, and we've become okay with that. Allow me to say again tonight, there must be a change. The truth is, for the last several years, we, especially in America and the Western Hemisphere, we have been living in a barren condition. The sound of spiritual infants in the church has been absent from most sanctuaries across our land. It's wonderful to hear the testimony that I've been serving the Lord for 50 years. That's wonderful. But where's the testimony that I've been serving the Lord for five days? Here in America, we failed to give birth to a spiritual outpouring that has been made readily available for this current generation by our Heavenly Father. We have to ask the question, how did we end up here? The barren womb is only awakened, please hear me, when one becomes willing to embrace the Word of God concerning their generation. Our unwillingness to embrace the instructions of our Father has brought us into a place of bondage a place of oppression, and a place of spiritual darkness. However, in the scripture reading that I gave you tonight, we see what happens when someone becomes willing to hear, embrace, and live out the word for their generation. I would like for us to look at the life of Manoah and his wife because in it we find a recipe that can bring about a deliverance to a generation. If you look at the backstory of Gen- or Judges chapter number 13, we find that it says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines for 40 years. They was in a time of judgment. There was in a time where the Lord says, you have, you have went against my, my way, you have not kept my statutes, you have not walked in obedience, and therefore I'm allowing you to be in a place of judgment. But as this 40-year cycle has come to a close, the Lord then sends the, the angel of the Lord, comes to Manoah's wife, and simply visits her and simply says, right now you are in a state where nothing is alive and nothing is fruitful but your womb is barren but there is getting ready to be a change take place because I am doing something fresh and new and I'm going to start it in you and he begins to have this conversation with her and it simply says I'm going to ask of you to change everything about your daily life because what's getting ready to take place uh, is going to start in you and therefore there has to be a change of behavior. Notice, he began to have this conversation. He says, you can't partake of the things that you normally would partake of because there is one that's getting ready to be brought forth and he is going to be a Nazarite from the womb. And you are going to have to make necessary changes concerning what's about to happen because I am getting ready to give birth to a deliverer so that the children of Israel can be transitioned from bondage and cursings into a place of freedom and blessing. So when we look at this, notice Manoah and his wife says that they heard the word of the Lord. I want to ask you today, what have you heard the Lord speaking in recent 
days and weeks in your life? Or has your life been so busy and so full of noise that you say, well, I've not really heard too much? Listen, it is not a list of do's and don'ts tonight, but it is about a relationship with our Father where we spend time alone and in conversation. And I've said this in recent weeks and months, but allow me to say it again. A conversation is not one-sided. In order for there to be a conversation, there has to be somebody that's willing to sit and listen. And you and I today, if there's ever been a time in our life where we need to hear what God is saying, it is now. Manoah and his wife, and when she began to have this conversation, she runs to her husband and she begins to speak to him and rehearses everything that she heard. She said, the angel, there, there's a man that came. He had the countenance of the angel of the Lord. And he began to tell me that this was going to happen to me in my life. And notice Manoah intrigued by faith. He simply then cried out and said, oh Lord, that which you said, that you was going to do, Lord, send that man back so that we will know how to proceed from here. Not only did they hear the word, but they also embraced the word. And when we embrace something, it means we encircle something. We bring it in. And Manoah, when he heard it by faith, he embraced the word that was spoken to his wife. And, and he said, I am going to believe that that which is barren is about to become fruitful. And not only did they hear, but not only did they embrace, but in our scripture reading tonight, we found that then they intrigued uh, of the Lord and they sought direction concerning the word of the Lord. And we find that these three basic things that they did brought about the birth of a young man by the name of Samson. They heard, they embraced, and they sought direction. Can I say this in our hearing tonight, that we must hear the word in this hour as well as embrace it and seek direction concerning it. I want to give you this statement tonight. Notice, before there can begin to be deliverance, there has to be someone willing to separate themselves to give birth to the deliverance. And I want to ask you tonight, and as well have I asked myself this question, am I really willing to be the one that's willing to separate myself, not necessarily from things that was necessarily bad, but I'm willing to separate myself completely and wholly for the service of the Lord? Is there anything off limits when it comes to me being obedient to the Lord? Or am I willing to give him everything, whatever that everything may consist of in your life? Am I willing to say yes, God, and say no to whatever? It is not enough for you and I to simply talk about change tonight, but we must become willing to give birth to the change. What are we willing to do? What are we willing to see and to cry out for in order for there to be deliverance in our city, in our nation, and on this globe. The ladies in this room that has carried children can tell you the joy of motherhood. But they also can tell you the times of discomfort and pain that's associated with it that they endured through the process and through the time of giving birth. But they also can tell you that Upon hearing the cry of that child, all of the pain and the discomfort is forgotten because of what is placed in their arms. Can I tell you today, I'm aware of the discomfort. I'm aware of the pain and the uncertainties and the challenges that comes in order to be a man of faith and a woman of faith that says, I'm going to walk in a separated manner, but also can stand here and tell you that I know the joy of experiencing the things uh, and the anointing and the blessings of God in our lives. Uh, I must present the question, however, to you today. Are we willing to change how we conduct ourselves in order to give birth to a season of deliverance? I'm not talking about legalism. I'm not talking about tradition. 
but I'm talking about whatever God speaks into your life to change. Are you willing to change that thing in order to give birth to something so that a generation can experience the freedom that comes through Him? When we begin to talk about change, it makes us a little nervous at times, but, but can I ask the question, are we willing to become willing to walk in a place of complete obedience to the word that God is speaking, not yesterday and not what he might speak tomorrow, but in the now, because now is all we have. We have no promise of tomorrow. But right now, God is in need of, and he chooses to have need of you and I that is willing to walk in complete obedience, that's willing to put it all on the line so that others can experience him. Do you realize tonight that if it had not been for somebody that was willing to go to the prayer closet, if it was not for somebody that was willing to give a tithe and an offering, if it was not for somebody that was willing to say no to other things and say yes to God, that that person that came and ministered to you and touched your heart with the, with the message of Christ uh, would have never taken place and therefore you would have still been lost today. But because the generation before us uh, was willing uh, to give all to things of God uh, uh, in, in seasons of their life, they was able to bring about uh, a time of deliverance for you and I to step into a place that we had never experienced before. You and I today hold the keys to those types of deliverance for this generation. Tonight, notice with me, because of Manoah and his wife hearing, embracing, and seeking instructions concerning the word they received, a barren womb was awakened and a deliverance came, not just for a small group of people, but for a nation. And it was out of that womb that came a child called Samson, and because he was birthed from a womb that was pure and set apart, he came forth in an anointed fashion. And as he began to grow, if you read on through chapter number 13, you find that it says that the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times. I sense today that God is desiring to do something very similar in our culture and in our present hour. I believe tonight wholeheartedly that we are in a time of an unexpected visitation. A visitation is simply this, it is the act of visiting, but also visitation is the appearance or coming of a supernatural influence or spirit. I believe that when you look out throughout scripture, you find multiple times where there was an unexpected visitation. I could give you just a few tonight. Most of you are probably familiar with a man by the name of Abraham. He was formerly known as Abram. But the word of the Lord come to him and said, I want you to get out of the house of your father. I want you to go to a land that I'll show you, and I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Then he begins to walk, and he begins to have conversation with the Lord. And then the Lord says, I'm going to give you a son. I'm going to, I'm going to give you one that, that, that there is going to be not just covenant with me, but it's going to be covenant with, with him. And, and this thing's going to continue. And, and we find that Isaac is born, but then after Isaac is born, then the Lord visits Abraham and says, I want you to offer your son, your only son, Isaac. And as they began to go together and they get the wood and they, they, they began to walk up the mountain and Isaac turns to Abraham and he says, uh, he says we, we've got the fire, we've got the wood, but where's the sacrifice? Uh, Isaac had no idea what was happening. Uh, but Abraham, uh, you have to realize that when they had left the servants, uh, they simply said this. He said, we are going to go yonder and we're going to worship, but we will return. He had a promise. Isaac didn't understand that promise at that time in his life, but Isaac finds himself lying uh, uh, on, a, on, a, on a rock, uh, getting ready to be sacrificed with his father standing above him with a, with a knife drawn when all of a sudden the voice of the Lord simply said, stay your hand. There was an unexpected visitation in that moment uh, because while they was walking up one side of the mountain, uh, there was a ram walking up the other side of the mountain uh, and it began to 
cry because it was caught in the thicket. Uh, an unexpected visitation uh, brought about a deliverance uh, where a young man understood uh, that there is a God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly uh, what anybody could ever ask or think. Uh, he experienced it firsthand. Uh, we could also talk about a young man, Daniel, uh, that refused to be denied uh, the privilege to pray to his God. Uh, and, but yet he found himself uh, in a lion's den. Uh, and you know that story very well. Uh, but the king who had been tricked by those even within his own reign, uh, he begins to run very early in the morning down to the old lion's den. Uh, and he began to call out, Oh Daniel, oh Daniel, was your God able to deliver you? He wasn't expecting an answer. Uh, he was expecting silence. Uh, but there was an unexpected visitation uh, that happened in that moment of time uh, and Daniel simply called out and said my God uh, was faithful to me yet again uh, listen uh, it was because a man was willing uh, to walk in obedience to the things of God three Hebrew boys you know them by Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego they simply said this, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, we're not careful to answer you, uh, but we know that our God is able to deliver us, uh, but if he chooses not to, we're still not going to bow to you, but we know that they went to that fiery furnace, but an unexpected visitation, Nebuchadnezzar looks over and he says, did we not cast three men? Uh, why is it that I see four and the fourth one is like the son of God? Uh, it was an unexpected visitation because uh, some men was willing to simply give everything. What am I saying tonight? Jonah found himself in the belly of the great fish. He had walked in rebellion. He found himself in a place of judgment. He said, I cried out from the belly of hell. But all of a sudden, there was a visitation, an unexpected visitation by the Spirit of God in the depths of that sea. And he's vomited out on the land. And then the Lord Lord immediately says, I want you to go uh, and to preach that which I bid you. Why? Is because uh, when somebody uh, hears the word, embraces the word, uh, and then becomes willing to be instructed by the word, uh, God always brings deliverance. Uh, Jonah didn't want to, but yet he went and he walked in obedience, uh, and we saw a city uh, be spared from judgment, uh, and people began to experience God. Uh, we find Paul and Silas, uh, they found uh, a prison shaken anointing, uh, began to deliver, uh, though the jailer and all that was there, his family, why? It's because they was willing to go through the discomfort. Uh, they was willing to be what God had ordained them to be and called them to be. Uh, we can talk about uh, a boy with the sack lunch uh, sitting in a multitude of people, just had a little bread uh, and just a couple fishes, uh, but all of a sudden because he was willing to give everything uh, he said I don't know what you can do with it uh, but here I have it uh, and because of that deliverance from hunger uh, came to a multitude of people uh, what am I saying tonight uh, we got to realize uh, that there is a need for an unexpected visitation in this hour uh, listen uh, three songs and a message isn't going to save your family uh, what's going to save your family is for you to begin to walk in the power and the authority of God. Uh, listen, uh, there's still people with issues just like the woman with the issue of blood. They've tried everything, uh, but if they could just touch the hem of his garment, uh, there's still healing virtue that's flowing. Uh, but how many knows he's not walking the streets today? Uh, but you and I are, uh, and the same power, the same anointing uh, that was in him uh, is able to ooze from us today uh, if we will heal and embrace uh, and get the instructions that he has for us in this hour. Uh, you and I today must realize uh, that just like Israel found itself uh, at a Red Sea, uh, an impassable place, uh, but when they began to stand uh, in a place of obedience uh, and the man of God simply stretched out the rod, uh, we find that there began to be a wind that blowed uh, and they 
began to part the water uh, and they walked in a manner that they'd never walked before. Uh, what am I saying tonight? Uh, please hear me. Uh, I sense God is desiring to do something in our lives today uh, that is going to touch the world. Uh, I'm not here to tell you it's all doom and gloom, uh, but I am here to tell you uh, that there is one uh, that is still able to heal, deliver, and set free. Uh, he still desires to save. Uh, he still desires to make uh, darkness dispel. Uh, and hear me today. Uh, I believe a word of instruction has been released to the body of Christ. Uh, it is not a word of suggestion, uh, but it is a word of instruction. Uh, he expects you to follow it. Uh, he expects me to live by it. Uh, just like you. Uh, he says, come out from among them. Be ye separate, saith the Lord, uh, and I will receive you unto myself. Uh, listen, you can get all comfortable uh, and you can do what the world does uh, and everybody going to say, well, it's really not that big of a deal. That's fine. Uh, but you'll never have power. Uh, you'll never have anointing uh, and you'll still bury your family and they'll die and go to hell. Uh, or you can get your act together and I can get my act together uh, and we can go back to the altar uh, and we can tarry there uh, and we can begin to get in the word and say, God, uh, you teach me, you show me. Uh, and we can become the peculiar people that God calls us to be. Uh, we may not be the most popular. Uh, we may be on everybody's gossip list. That's all right. Uh, they talked about him too. Uh, but I'd rather walk with the power and the anointing of God uh, where when I walk into a hospital room uh, and I touch the hand of one that's dying, uh, that they resurrect uh, and begin to serve the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Uh, I'm going to preach this thing tonight. You just sit there uh, because I'm here to tell you uh, what we're doing's not working. Uh, but I'm telling you, there's a God that is still able uh, if we're just willing to hear uh, and embrace. Uh, listen, uh, we got a world that's dying and going to hell, uh, but we got a God that's already gave everything uh, so that they could be delivered and set free. Uh, and on a Wednesday night, we just need somebody. Uh, we just need a Manoah and his wife uh, to say, God, uh, come and visit us again. Uh, if you'll tell us what to do from here, uh, we'll walk in complete obedience. Uh, I don't care what people say or think. Uh, if you don't want me to drink that, I won't drink it. Uh, if you don't want me to eat that, I won't eat it. Uh, if you don't want me to go there, I won't go there. Uh, whatever it is, God, because I want what's in here uh, that's been birthed uh, to be full of power uh, and full of authority. Uh, listen, uh, we need some infant Christians uh, to begin to be moved on by the Holy Spirit uh, in such a way that lives are changed forever. The question tonight, will you, will I be willing to hear? Will we be willing to embrace? Will we be willing? And will we be brave enough to ask for instructions on how to proceed? Believe it or not tonight, Even though we think we're intelligent, and yeah, we probably are to a certain degree, we don't know everything. None of us in this room. And where we need to be from this point forward, we only get that revelation when we get to a place where we hear him and we respond accordingly. For those that hear, embrace, and seek instructions, Concerning this moment of time, I believe this with all of my heart. They are going to experience an awakening in their womb. And they are going to give birth to a deliverance. I want that to sink into your spirit. The world may have wrote you off and said you're this or that. But I'm so thankful he hasn't written us off. This is going to be, I believe, a deliverance that pushes back darkness and gives birth to an awakening that ushers in the presence of God that is going to cause men to gasp at his glory. In your Bibles, you are familiar with the passage of Scripture in 1 Timothy chapter number 4. Paul is writing to someone he loves, Timothy. 
verse number 12 through verse number 14, he says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be an example of the believers in word and conversation in charity and spirit and faith and purity. He says, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. But notice verse 14. He says, Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbyter, the elders. What he was reminding him, he's saying this, Timothy, there was a day. There was a day when you came and stood before the elders of the church and they laid their hands on you and when they did, there was something that was imparted into you and you received a gift. You received a gift that cannot lie dormant, but it's a gift that has got to be continually activated and used. And Paul said, listen, I want you to do all these other things, but don't neglect the gift that's in you. What he was simply telling him was, listen, he said, there was, there's something that in that moment of time, yes, we could talk about many different things concerning gifts, but the ultimate gift is The one that lives inside of every one of us that can say that I'm saved tonight. And when we reach down in and we begin to stir up the giftings and the callings of God that has been imparted in us, we begin to be those men and women that walk with power and authority. Paul told Timothy, he said, listen, you got to make sure everything is stirred up and moving because you just... You just never know what you're going to encounter, but you know this, that there's a God that's always with you. Tonight, I want to remind you on a Wednesday evening that, that we don't always know what we're going to encounter. If God gives us tomorrow, we may have plans for tomorrow, but we don't know what's in our path tomorrow. But I'll tell you this, that if he sees fit to give us tomorrow, we know this, that we have one that will walk with us and be with us through tomorrow. We've got to make sure that we're reaching down and stirring up those gifts that he's given us because there is opportunities that's allotted to those that are willing to hear, embrace, and seek instructions concerning the words that he's speaking in any given generation. Tonight, I want to leave you with this thought, this statement rather, do not neglect the gift that's in you. Don't sell it off. Anybody remember the story of Naboth's vineyard? And Ahab said, I'll give you something that's of equal, I'll give you something that's better, I'll give you its worth in money. Naboth stood and one of the most powerful men of the world at that time and he simply said the Lord forbid that I sell it to you what he was simply saying is not for sale he was saying I'm not going to I'm not going to I'm not going to go against my fathers in a culture that has become so custom to religious theatrical events and entertainment driven societies it's really easy to get caught up in the in the fluff I understand all that and I'm not against changing methods and doing the things that's needed to reach a generation but we're in a place today where Life no longer has value. And children don't feel like life's worth living. And the list just goes on and on and on.
that in the midst of all of the darkness, there's a glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ that's not yet been heard. We talk about the 3.2 billion people that's never heard Jesus yet. We can talk about the 1040 window where a large majority of them are and all these things, but the truth of the matter is this. Some of that number of 3.2 billion is in your neighborhood. It's in your city, in your county, in your state. If we'd be real honest tonight, it's even probably in our family. We so quickly can lose the greatest things. I have family today their children have never been in the church they don't know what it is to sit in a Sunday school class they don't know what it is to sing Jesus loves me this I know the Bible tells me so but yet their uncles have gave their life to this thing and their grandfather has grandmother gave their life to it but yet there's a lineage that has never heard who Jesus really is all the while the church doors have been open not a Sunday went by that it wasn't open think about it now not a Sunday went by that the choir didn't sing what in a Sunday went by that the offering plate wasn't passed. At the same time, a generation doesn't know who he is. Instead of having olive branches that's blooming, we have desert plains. Instead of having the shade of the old oak trees in the spiritual realm, we simply have people lying underneath the stars with no cover and no protection. All because we bought into a lie that if we just went to the house of God, everything would be good. No. I'm not trying to bring us down tonight, but I am trying to get us to a place where we understand that if we keep doing the same thing, expecting different results, we're just a bunch of insane people because that is the definition of insanity question is what are we going to do about it what am I going to do about it what are you going to do about it I feel like the Lord wants to visit us tonight and just I believe he wants us to simply hear that much like Manoah's wife says this season this season's coming to a close but I've I've got plans for this new season. I believe he has, I believe he has some Samsons, some deliverers that he's wanting to bring forth in this season. We can look at Samson's life and say, man, he messed up in a lot of areas, and yes, he did. But I will tell you what he was. He was a disruptor of the enemy. He broke strongholds. And God is getting ready to anoint a generation to be disruptors and to break strongholds so that people can begin to experience freedom again. Tonight, in order for that to happen, though, Men and women like you and I all across this globe, especially all across this nation, we're going to have to stop and pause. And we're going to have to have the conversation that Manoah and his wife had with the angel of the Lord. We're going to have to make a decision just like they did. Manoah's wife, do you realize how radical her life changed? 
they come to the piano this evening? Do you realize in a moment of time, an unexpected visitation changed her life? If we can talk about it in natural terms just for a moment, that's like, don't give yourself to this, this, and this. That's like the Lord showing up today and telling you all that's here in Connorsville, Indiana, guess what? No more Pizza King. No more Big Boys. No more Taco Bell drive through at 1.30 in the morning because that's the only thing that's open. Oh, well, by the way, when you go to Kroger, no more Rocky Road ice cream. You got to change it all. And you're like, oh my Lord, really? But he says, if you'll, if you'll change all of this stuff, change all of your behavior. He said, something's going to come out of your womb. That's far better than anything that you've ever experienced in your life. Does anybody in this room remember what it's like to hold that newborn baby? We got one back there. Any, I'm sure Andrew and Trevor could probably tell you a few things about that. I asked them, I said, y'all spoiling that thing on the end? Oh yeah, everybody just laughs and shakes their head, yeah. All of these years later, I can still remember. I can still remember what it was like to hold my son for the very first time. I still know what it was like to hold my daughter at the, for the very first time. Because there's nothing like it. Debbie says we need to try that again with a grandkid, but I'm not in no big hurry to do that. But I think I'm getting outnumbered. I'm not old enough to be a grandpa yet so but when you think about everything that she had experienced in life maybe Manoah and his wife had had the best marriage maybe they never had an argument maybe maybe she maybe Manoah was a yes man maybe he just did everything she wanted every time she wanted it maybe it, maybe her life was perfect I don't know I doubt it but maybe just say it was Nothing could compare to what she experienced when she first held Samson. But when she held Samson, because of her decision to separate and do according to the word of the Lord, when she held that child, that was a child that was birthed in a manner that hardly any other child had ever been birthed. If you look at history, because he came from the womb as a Nazarite there was a special anointing on him I don't know about you but I just know in my personal experience that when when people walk with an anointing there is a glow and there is a there is a presence about them that cannot be described and I'm sure when she looked at that child and held that child there was something supernatural that was present in that moment and it was like all oh, it was worth it was worth not going to Pizza King. It was worth not going to... Li listen, so what she was saying is it was worth every change that I made in my life because I know that I'm giving birth to something that's getting ready not just to bring joy to me, but it's getting ready to bring a deliverance to a nation. Do you understand tonight that when we get into a place of complete obedience to the Word of God, that what we give birth to as individuals and as a local body and as the body of Christ in general that the children the young men and women and the new converts and those that come and experience salvation and the things of God they begin to walk with an anointing that is different and I believe in this season it's an anointing of a deliverer and deliverance for a nation but we have to become willing just like Manoah and his wife, they had to become willing to change the current situation and behavior. As I said in the beginning, it's not a list of do's and don'ts. It's a life of obedience. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not telling you how to do. I'm telling you just to do what God says to do concerning you. He says that we are to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Listen, he's not going to lead you astray. 
but when he begins to speak into your life, it will line up with the Word of God. And when your life lines up with the Word of God, there is safety there. Not only is there safety there, but there's anointing and there is there is the Holy Spirit that, that leads us and guides us into all truth. And we can stand with confidence again. Tonight, let's be the ones grab a hold of it in such a manner that we don't waste an unexpected visitation that we capitalize on this moment of time in history and simply pray the prayer, God, your will be done in our lives. Your will be done in our community, in our city, our family, our nation. Let's become the world changers that God has designed for us to be. As we stand all over the house this evening,